We're with uh, Expedition 65 flight engineer Shane Kimbrough of NASA aboard the International Space Station. Shane, good day to you. A big uh, amount of work on the docket uh, for you and Thomas Pesquet in the days ahead as you head out uh, the Quest airlock for a pair of spacewalks to begin uh, upgrading and augmenting the station's power supply. Uh, it, they're called IROSAs, ISS Roll-Up Solar Arrays. Give us a little preview of what these arrays are all about and what these spacewalks coming up are all about. Yeah, thanks, Rob. Tama and I are really looking forward to going outside. Of course, there's a whole team of people here on board as well as on the ground that are going to take care of us and make sure we're doing the right thing. Um, these IROSAs, as you mentioned, the, the new ISS rollout solar arrays are pretty fantastic. Uh, we got a chance to see them when we were at Kennedy just before we launched a um, little over uh, six weeks ago or so. And it's pretty incredible to see the material they're made out of, for one. So they're this lightweight, flexible, composite blanket material um, that can get stowed very compactly. But uh, when it's rolled out and deployed, uh, it can, can uh, bring in a lot of sunlight, which in, in our case will give us a lot of power on the space station. We'll talk a little more about the arrays here in just a second. You and Thomas are in a very unique position you conducted a pair of spacewalks together back in 2017 to upgrade station batteries, uh, the power supply at that time and the replacement of batteries, and also to uh, set the stage for the installation of the docking port on the uh, zenith or space-facing side of the Harmony module. So you and uh, Toma really know each other's moves pretty well. How uh, important is all of that in creating the efficiencies you will need for these next uh, pair of EVAs that are coming up. Yeah, that's a great point. I, I was very fortunate to go out with Toma two other times, like you mentioned. And the choreography that you're that you're alluding to there is very important outside, of course. Um, this this one, this these IROSA um, EVAs are going to be very challenging, very complex. So we've got to make sure that we're both on the same page for every movement that we do, um, whether that's to protect the solar arrays or to just protect the pallet that we're on or to connect, you know, uh, one of the electrical connectors. Uh, we got to make sure we're we're step and step and make sure we know what we're doing, um, and also make sure that we're tied into the ground so they know what we're doing. So it's going to be a, a huge effort. Um, Jenny Seide is going to be our Capcom and our, I mean, our ground IV, and she'll be, you know, leading us through the spacewalk. So we're going to make sure we're in step with her as well so that uh, we get these things installed. And uh, as long as the hardware behaves and get all the connections made, we're going to have a lot uh, bigger new power source once we get done. In all, when it's all said and done, there will be three pairs of these arrays, six in all, that will uh, upgrade and augment six of the eight power channels on the station. What, um, what is it about uh, the design of these arrays that are important to bringing the station back to its original power output capability for the rest of the lifetime of this complex? Well, these solar arrays are, high, um, the density on them is very high, which is you know just an upgrade, so to speak. Um, just like all things, even on Earth, um, as the years go by, things get uh, more efficient and smaller, and, and this is no exception to that because these arrays are much smaller than the original arrays that we're gonna go put these next to. Um, these arrays that we're gonna put out there are about 60 feet by 15 feet. Uh, we're going to place them on the inboard side of an existing solar array. And, of course, they're not going to hit each other when they're going around. So all that geometry has been worked out by the engineers. Uh, but we're looking forward, again, to installing. You know, we're going to get a chance to do two of these arrays here in, uh, in about a week and a half or so. And looking forward to doing that to help the space station's power supply. One social media question that we received uh, asks, uh, how efficient are these new solar arrays? And... Uh, the temperature, what temperature do they reach when they're exposed to direct sunlight? Yeah, they're around 20 to 30 percent. Uh, at least that's the boost we're going to get on the space station when we get these installed. And each one produces about 20 kilowatts of power. And so once all six are installed, we're going to have about 120 kilowatts more of power for the space station. So that's pretty amazing um, in itself. And I forgot the last part of that question, Rob. What was it? Uh, it, it asks, uh, what temperature do they reach uh, when they're exposed to direct sunlight? 
Yeah, I assume they're going to reach the same temperature that everything outside does. And that's around 200 degrees C. Uh, we're going to experience that same temperature in the spacesuits. Of course, the spacesuits protect us, uh, but everything outside when the sun's out is around 200 C. Now, a larger version of these arrays are contemplated for the Gateway program uh, for deep space exploration application. So how important, uh, not only for the current augmentation of power on the station, but the future application to NASA's uh, future space exploration efforts are these spacewalks that you and Tomah will be conducting. Well, like I said, we're the first two, and there's going to be several more in the next couple of years to get all six installed. And then that system, you know, hopefully it'll get proven uh, before we take it to the lunar uh, gateway, uh, which is where it is, you know, similar design, only bigger on the gateway, uh, but a similar IROSA, or excuse me, AROSA uh, will get installed on the gateway. Uh, we're going to install them manually, as you know, and then we're going to roll them out uh, manually. But the ones on the, the gateway will actually be automatic once they get onto orbit. So a few differences there, um, the, the size for one and the way they're getting deployed, but the same technology. Shane, uh, looking at the procedures timeline, uh, this is a tricky EVA from a timing standpoint. Uh, there's an eclipse issue that you have to be conscious of. There's a certain inhibits that the ground controllers will be uh, watching uh, the clock very carefully as you and Tomah go through your procedures. Uh, if there's a pinch point, uh, something that concerns you the most about being able to execute the spacewalk, what do you think it is at this point? Well, there are a lot of complexities to this one, like you mentioned. Um, to me, it's it's the hardware. It's just if it behaves, and this is on any spacewalk, this is no different, but this has got a few more complexities just due to the nature of what's going on. Um, so as long as the hardware behaves, you know, it could be any bolt um, as we're taking the iroses off the pallet. If those don't work, that's a problem, right? If when we're installing it on the mounting brackets out on P6, if those don't go in, then we have a problem. So there's a bunch of little pinch points, and I can't really nail down one that uh, we're, we're specifically concerned about. Uh, maybe the ones during the eclipse, I think, uh, definitely are on our radar. So like you mentioned, we have some actions during the eclipse where we hook up uh, the power from these new solar arrays to the panels of the old solar arrays. And those, it's not tricky, we, we hope. But uh, again, if we have some complications there due to the connectors or whatever, then that's going to be a big deal. And then if we can't get it done during the eclipse, we'll have to wait till the next eclipse, so another 45 or 50 minutes later. So the timing, like you mentioned, is going to be very tricky. And a final question, Shane. Uh, these will be the seventh and eighth spacewalks of your career. Uh, did you ever envision that you would have the opportunity to go outside uh, that many times and do the variety of important work that uh, you and Tomar are about to embark on? Yeah, thanks for that question, Rob. I never, of course, never envisioned that. I was, you know, when I flew on shuttle many years ago and, and got a chance to do a couple of spacewalks, I really thought that was probably going to be the only times I got outside. And, uh, you know, things have played out differently so that I've gotten the chance to do many more. And I'm very blessed. I feel very lucky and fortunate to do that. And uh, this time, Tomah is going to be leading the way on both of these spacewalks. And I look forward to him being in that role and uh, me just being a good support person out there with him. And we're just going to work together closely with the ground teams to make sure we get this job done. Well, Shane, uh, all the best of luck to you and Tomah during these spacewalks and the rest of your mission aboard the International Space Station. Thanks for joining us today. Subscribe for more space. space, 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 space.